There are two specific types of Shaco mains. The bad ones, who build AD, go jungle, and likely end the game by telling you to go die. But there are also the good ones, the ones that play the game in a unique way, and don't win games by playing standard league. They build AP, and win games by using tricks and mind games, to bait even high elo players into unwinnable situations. Our player today is one of those, Shaco Midlane, an EU West master player who has created a new style of laning, where his champion constantly annoys the enemy mid, but can never actually be killed himself. The enemy might as well be laning against a wasp. You can't hit him, he's too fast. You can't kill him, he always slips away. But he can still annoy you and stink you at any point, and get a solo kill. It's such a weird style of winning games, breaking all the rules of mid lane as well as for playing Shaco, using boxes on the wave, using a special clone trick to get 1v1 kills, and even taking flash on a champion where it's unheard of, because he has one already on his queue. Let me show you why Shaco mid is so hard to beat, and also why we might soon see it in pro play. In 2020, our player was stuck in Diamond, but there was one thing he hated more than being stuck in Diamond, being ganked. He was so sick of playing mage mid laners, being 2v1 and dying. In fact, it got so bad that he specifically thought, screw it, I'm finding a new champion that just can't be ganked. This is where Shaco mid was born, a champion with a huge amount of mobility, as well as an invis, boxes to defend himself, and even the option to dodge damage with ult. He wanted a champion that couldn't be be caught and he found one, but this guy is not just any normal Shaco player, he decided to take this style mid, the shortest lane, once again to avoid being ganked, even taking flash as an extra tool to let him play more aggressive and still remain safe. To show how unbeatable this strategy is, let's look at his laning phase. At level 1, Shaco takes his W, this is not actually for lane, but instead to leash his jungler. Shaco mid told me the reason he takes W first is to make sure his jungler won't flame his pick, which is fair, but it also creates a huge advantage for his team already at level 1, using W on his jungler's buff at 50 seconds, then again twice more before it spawns, your boxes can replace the leash from your teammates. So while this is happening, instead of leashing, his bot lane can get a good level 1 push, Shaco can get back to mid lane in time, as well as top lane also getting to lane without having to leash. You can already see the advantage top has against the enemy Aurelia, who had to leash and will now be behind in XP for the whole lane. It's a huge advantage especially in high elo, and even speeds up your jungler's clear time. Entering lane, Shaco places a box on the first three melee minions. This is a weird play, but putting the box inside the wave is a valuable tool for Shaco mid. Here, it pushes the enemy laner off the minions, and should guarantee Shaco can collect them himself. After this, Shaco starts placing boxes outside of the wave on the sides. These are safety tools that create zones that the enemy mid can't walk into. It's similar to how if you're playing Ivern mid, he can use bushes in the lane to stay safe and farm. Shaco mid now has these boxes for safety, so he's able to walk around and still get CS. At level 2, Shaco takes Q. You can already see he's denying any play the enemy wants to make. If they walk up, a box will stop them. If they can reach you, then a Q stealth to jump away will dodge any of their engage. You're not a super strong laner, but at the same time, you're never going to get destroyed in lane. You have all the tools you need to get the CS and the XP, but enemies cannot kill you no matter how hard they try. This means you'll never get super far behind and unable to contribute to the game, and this fact is incredible for any champion in solo queue. Taking E at level 3, Shaco now wants to start poking, stacking his mana flow band. He keeps placing the boxes outside of the wave, staying safe and controlling the lane. If he wants to push the wave and move, he places a box inside the wave. This messes with all of the minion aggro and gets it to push. If enemies shove into you and try to stop you CSing under tower, a Q stealth into box behind the wave forces the enemy to back off and gives you time to collect all of the CS. At this point, Shaco's starting to get low, so he needs to use another safety tool, Teleport. Since the teleport nerfs happened, its popularity in solo queue has dropped a ton, but Shaco continues to take it, because it really helps his laning. When he reaches 800 gold, he can take a big trade to swap his life for CS, base to get his items, then teleport back on full health. Meanwhile the enemy laner has ignite and cannot do anything about this play. They're stuck in the lane, while he gets mana and health sustain. One thing people don't know about Shaco is this trick you can use to expand the range of your fear on your box. Instead of placing the box on top of someone and trying to hit them with the ring, if you place the box down and it hits something inside that ring, the fear automatically expands past the range. So Shaco can consistently put the box down on top of the wave to make sure it's going to activate, and then also get an even bigger fear range to connect with champions who are outside the circle. He doesn't always have to play passive, especially once he hits level 6. Level 6 is the highlight of the game, where Shaco does a trick I've never seen before in high elo. So far in the whole game, 
game, he's been super passive. So when he presses Alt randomly in lane, and then walks into the river, doing something weird, Fizz doesn't really know what's going on. But then suddenly, for the first time, Shaco disappears, and does something aggressive, instantly reappearing on top of Fizz. It looks super risky, and Fizz takes their chance, engaging with the burst damage for a 1v1 kill. Then suddenly, it turns out it's a clone. It pops, dealing a ton of damage to Fizz, and baits a perfect 1v1 for Shaco. Instead of taking a normal 1v1, the Shaco actually used the leash range of his clone to fake where he is. With the clone at max range in the river, Shaco engages with his Q. This makes the clone walk out of range, resetting and jumping to him, making it look like Shaco actually appeared and revealed himself. This baits the enemy mid, because a Shaco was just stealthed and then appeared, and the clone can't do this, so it must be the real one. But it turns out it isn't. The clone dies with a huge burst of AP damage, letting Shaco finish off the kill. This player is full of tricks like this. The best way to see if a Shaco player is good is how they use their clone. And I gotta say, this guy is really good. I've seen challenger players who don't do some of the stuff he does. Here he is caught in a fight, and uses ult for safety. Usually you would have your clone at the front to tank the damage while you're safe by your tower. But Shaco knows this fact, and also enemies know this fact. This is high elo. They know which is the clone. Lucian flashes forwards to salvage a kill out of this situation, but Shaco has actually been in his face the whole time, acting like the clone. Once the clone pops, enemies realise they've been fooled and they're just dead. Rather than winning these fights through a CS lead or having super high damage, he prefers to use mind games and acting, and this is really special because you don't need a ton of gold or CS to win fights in this way. All you need are the strategies and experience on the champion, and then any fight can still be won. If he ever needs to base, he suicides the clone into a wave. Enemies are forced to retreat from it, or they're going to take a burst of damage. It explodes to kill the wave, and the boxes keep auto-attacking, continuing to push while you're already returning to base, with teleport up again to come back immediately. Instead of teleporting around the map, Shaco saves it only for mid lane, making sure he's never going to lose mid tower. If you never lose tower, then you never lose your lane, and you always provide something for your team. Keeping mid tower up is a huge point of pressure, and it lets you invade the enemy jungle and put down boxes, making sure you're always going to have an impact. If early game on Shaco mid was like playing as Magikarp, where your goal is to stay safe and then evolve, once you get lost chapter into Leandries, you fully transform into Gyarados. Your damage spikes with the burst also extending it a lot, especially with the boxes, even then buying Demonic Embrace second to maximise his damage over time. If anyone accidentally walks into a box, it's going to be painful. Enemies can only lane against this pick for so long before they really want to go in. If Shaco does nothing, he can scale up, get these items and win the game. With all that gold, he's much too impactful in the game, so you can't just leave him alone. He only gets more annoying over time. So enemies will really want to fight him, with even Grandmaster players entering a fight they know they just can't win. Shaco dodges damage with his ult, baits them again with the clone mind game, and they're just dead. No one has any dignity left when they play against a Shaco mid. Everyone's going to fall victim to one of his tricks. And this tilt factor is very underrated. Surprisingly, he's actually a good 1v1 champion, because at a certain point in the fight, if enemies choose to hit the clone instead of Shaco, they just die. They can't outplay it, because it will eventually explode on top of them no matter what. So they pretty much have to risk killing one of them and hoping they're correct. And if they're not, then they take a huge burst of AP damage. Whenever he's fighting an enemy near tower, he'll immediately sprint the clone into tower to cut off their escape. If they decide to run away, then they'll get hit by this explosion and fear. If they don't, then they'll just die to his boxes and his E. He doesn't let them have an escape route. Team fighting is where AP Shaco is the most fun to play. You're a baiting, deceitful monster who can both distract multiple people while also killing multiple people with boxes and your ridiculous clone damage. The start of every fight should look like you're overextended and getting caught. This is exactly what Shaco wants the enemy team to think. But in reality, if we rewind, 40 seconds ago, Shaco started setting up these boxes in this exact spot, creating a zone for the fight to happen that enemies don't know about. When he lets himself get caught, they're forced to walk into his domain and deal with the fear and huge burst damage to try and catch him. Enemies get split up and even get baited by the clone for more damage, and Shaco capitalises on it to finish off the kills. He keeps slipping around, playing in fog to stay safe. Enemies should have no idea where you are, and even managing to escape with stealth, because it's probably not a good idea for them to chase you after all of this. In this fight, Shaco himself is doing one thing, meanwhile his clone is actually hard carrying the fight on the other side. Shaco is baiting, using boxes and staying safe, but even just his clone by itself kills the fed enemy jungle and mid lane, with Shaco using boxes to pick up the rest of the kills. A good AP Shaco is a nightmare to fight against. Later in the game, the clone damage just keeps increasing. On 
average about 600 damage for the explosion, but then you have the boxes firing as well, and the burn from your items. So it's best to try and make the clone explode on as many people as possible. Later in the game, Shaco picks up his Zonyas. This lets him bait even more in fights and still be safe. Whenever an objective is up, Shaco's job is to make sure the enemy jungler can't reach it, setting up boxes that they're going to be forced to walk through to enter, using clone to slow and poke them down. And since Shaco isn't the jungler himself, he can focus fully on just messing with the enemy team, while his team secures the objective. Why would you pick the boring jungle role when you can do stuff like this? By the way, if you want even more off-meta videos, as well as to see me test Shaco mid, then check out my second channel, Happy Chime Noises 2. Link is in the description. Every game, our Shaco bans TF, because TF has the stun card, as well as the alt vision, which destroys Shaco as a champion. But really, every matchup is playable, as long as you follow his one rule. Convince yourself that not dying and missing a few farm is better than greeting to get that CS and still dying. A few CS lost in laning phase is nothing, but a death is really bad for you. Before we give it a rating, here's his build, which is really simple. Starting Doran's ring, because he says he's not scared of enemies. Buying Leandries first, with cooldown boots for more plays, into Demonic Embrace or Zonya second if you need more safety, buying the other one right after. Anti-heal is good for you to buy since you have good AoE and burn damage, so it continuously gets reapplied. His runes are all about poke, mana sustain, and then staying around as much as he can to be annoying in fights. In conclusion, the rating for this build is also very simple. You're a champion that can't lose lane, and so that is amazing, but you also have the damage of a mid lane carry, with the ability to bait enemies into boxes, jump around fights, and give enemies nightmares. I rate it even higher than playing support Shaco. The pick is really good in both lanes, but your early game as well in both lanes is really bad. So if you're in bot lane, your AD carry can just die, and you can't really help them, especially if it's level 1. Shaco mid doesn't negatively affect anyone else early game, so this pick is going right up into the top tier. I've seen some LCS coaches talking about this, and wouldn't be surprised if it was picked this weekend, or even became meta in solo queue, since it's so fun, and is a new style of carrying games. If you want to see more of this Shaco, his Twitch is linked in the description. Thanks so much for watching!